Hi all and welcome. Today is about a new feature in the Hypermesh Lattice Mesher. And um, yeah, and I have the demonstrator up and running for that. Um, but let me tell you how it, how it all went. So I was thinking about the Lattice Mesher and um, what was bothering me was that it is rather slow. And it's the Hypermesh part of it. And it's not Hypermesh's fault in this case or... I'm not here to mock hypermesh because it's slower, so no. Um it's just that we have it but let's back off for a second. So what we're doing, we're taking a FEM file or a model, hypermesh model. We take that in, uh we just scan it, how many nodes, where are there the nodes, um how many elements, what elements, stuff like that. We built a data structure ourselves. And then we have that. We build a lattice mesh of it, and then we export that in terms of a huge list of TCL commands. Then we send this TCL command list to Hypermesh and say, go. And then it takes one line by one line by one line by one line by one line and so on. So Hypermesh really has the problem that it cannot properly um, allocate memory for it so it's rather slow and maybe also something has to do with tcl but i'm not sure about that may python is not really s that fast either but um well it's definitely faster than going line by line in tcl code with hypermesh and then outputting that into a FE fem file and that was the point where i thought to myself why the heck did i didn't come up with that earlier well, we, we, we have a FEM file, right? We build a data structure, we build our lattice structure, and then why not directly creating a FEM file and then loading that into Hypermesh and then do whatever else is needed. So, well, I was thinking about that and then I just thought, well, yeah, let's just try it, implement it and see where we go. So, what I want to show you right now is uh, the simply just um, just a little bit of a demonstrator. Um, here we go. So we have here the small model, right? So this is a small model, has a bunch of hex elements, bunch of grid nodes. And but what we're doing with that is we're building this huge list of TCR commands, right? So insane amount of, of rods. I'm not 100% sure that this is the correct one, but I think so. Well, I'm not one really sure. But here we have um, a couple of rods, a couple of nodes, and we are just assigning the um, IDs with while creating the nodes and stuff like that. So why not build a FEM file just like this? So I went there, did that. And it's working quite well. I am recording this video now for the third time or so, because I had a hugely dumb mistake in the code, really. It's, it's uh, got me freaking, freaking out. Um, but what I did at the end of the video, I just wanted to compare the two versions of the, of the, yeah, of, of the algorithm to, to build a hypermesh lattice mesh, right? So now it's done. It's not done, is it? Yeah, now it's done. Let's pause. It's perfect, perfect timing. So it ran for 11 minutes. 11 minutes. This was the standard way of doing that. It was, I think, 7K elements. Yeah, 7K elements, 3D elements, which translated to, I think, 200K, 200K elements. So what we got here was some just something like this. Let me show it. This is the sphere model. Like, yeah, there are a few elements, right? So 200K elements, not that small of a model, right? But it's not that big of a model either. But 11 minutes. All right, now let me show you how the new version does that. It's just a simple change in the code for the user. Instead of just giving the mesh command, it's mesh FEM file. Should we bother taking a stopwatch? Well, I count the seconds, right? So I have a stopwatch here. And... 
Yo. Yeah. Four seconds. Blazingly fast. No. All jokes aside, it's it's quite fast. Um, and what this outputs is something like this. Like a FEM file, right? So you have here rods, you have grids. You don't have material data and beam section information and stuff like that. So this is a bummer. But um, this will get imported uh, or yeah, implemented in the future for sure. Um, now just 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 look at that. I just take this FEM file and drag it into Hypermesh and see what it does. Don't save. So it will take a little bit longer than just opening a HM file because it has to do stuff like we are doing as well, importing, creating data structures and stuff like that. But you see, it's there. So no properties, okay, that's a bummer, but you see, Element-wise, we have the same 200k elements. We created that in less than 10 seconds. And now let's just quickly, let me just quickly show you how I did that. Um, and also what was the stupid mistake? Um, I don't know why this is not formatting correctly. Yeah, okay. Now it does. Well, um, so it was basically about uh, this commit. So this was the thing what I was doing. So I have a new class here or file, script builder FEM file. This is basically the heart of the algorithm. This takes care of building the FEM file. And then I made changes to the elements because I have found that it would be a rather good idea to just have a, a 1D element representation, all for the stuff I have planned in the future to just be able to assign stress values and stuff like that onto that. Um, so this would be quite quite nice to have that as well but maybe this will also get a separate class in the future but you can see it down here this green block here it's the element 1d i called that so but i will not go into the details i i'm sure not many of you will want to have that in this level of detail so i will just skip that a little bit and then i did tests about it and now let me tell you this stupid mistake i did so in the in the last video run I did it was going rather well, right? I was showing the example with the small model. It's I can show you this as well here. It's like um, you just do the mesh the standard way, right? So this was the old way. When I give no path at all, then it will take the standard small model. All right, takes a few seconds. And takes a few seconds. And it's done. All right. And now let's see the new one. Well, uh, you know what it, this will look like. Done, right? But then I was, was a bit cocky about it and just pulled my biggest FEM model I had, with, which was this sphere model, which you saw, and just made a comparison. And then it took longer than I expected. I had not implemented a calendar, so it took a while. And then I was just thinking, well, how long will it take? Then I was implementing the calendar and saw, well, it was rather slow. And then I thought, all right, let's see where it can go wrong. Where, where, where could it be? What did I miss? And then I, you can see here the changes I, I, I was doing. So here was the count implementation. So this is nothing special. And here, here we have it. So when I create the rod elements, I was, I want to be sure that I did not create the rod before. So one, two node 1 to node 2 and node 2 to node 1 is the same thing so i don't have to make this twice so i have those node pairs which was usually it was a set right and actually the typing makes sense here so let me just put that back in here so what was here it was a list and i thought well that's not maybe a good idea because you want to look it up rather frequently and if you have a list it will suck what timing 
uh, is concerning times. Um, it will take a lot of time. So I was changing that here. I made a set out of it and changed that to add rather than append, which is a method of, of a set. And then I got this error all the time. I don't know if it's still here, but I don't think so. No, it's not here. Um, I got the error all the time. Uh, list does not have add method. And I was thinking to myself, what the hell? This is a set here. Are you stupid? It's a set. It's not a list, right? And what I was missing is in the reset command, I had the clearing uh, also to be a list. And that's maybe unfortunate, but maybe it's even a better idea to just simply call a method here. I don't know if that exists. Does it? Does a set have method have clear? Let's run the tests. Um, I'm deactivating the virtual environment and the task tests. Test, task, test. And if that's work working, uh, I will implement that for all the other changes because, <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Okay. So I can change that to clear. I hope, I think, yeah. Even here I have it, right? So stupid me doing here the, the empty braces. Well, all right. So to sum it up, it was a stupid mistake. Uh, check your code throughout where this variable is uh, set and not just where it is initialized. And before ever committing something, do the linting locally. That's always a good idea. Uh, but I will not be doing the corrections right now. If that runs through, I will commit it and that's all. But if it does not run through, I will not bother you with the, with the corrections here. So. 10 out of 10, that's a good thing. So I can just simply commit that and uh, correct stupid mistake. List instead of set. All right, so commit that, sync it, and then we have the linting process on the Git, but, but that should be okay. So let's sum it up. We have now two ways of doing it. Um, we can also maybe show that a little bit better here. This will not work. I'm so sorry that Conda environment is freaking me out. I have to somehow get rid of it. So um, Python minus M, the lattice measure dot main and then dash dash help. So we have now two commands. The mesh command is the typical hyper mesh meshing command. And the mesh fem file is the direct method to just do it in the file directly. I will maybe have a better name for that and also for sure uh, do the doc string here a little bit better. But yeah. So um, this is about it for this video. So it's a lot faster to, to do it this way. It's not, it's still a lazy implementation, I have to tell you. It's still not properly implemented to take all in your materials into account, your loadings, your boundary conditions. It should behave correctly with multiple components, but that's not tested yet. Uh, so there's still work to do, um, but I'm fairly content with uh, half days of work uh, to just put it in and um, see where we get. So now bigger models are not that much of a problem. And a fallback solution for you is always to just take whatever the TCL, not TCL, the FEM file outputs, put that into your existing hypermesh and then just set up manually the boundary conditions, loads and materials, and you're good to go. So I think it's okay for now, it could be better it always can be better, but um, it's okay for now. And if you have any questions, comments, if anything is uh, on your mind, just leave a comment here. So that's what the comments are for. Or write me a mail, that's also possible. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope this was worth for you watching. And if, uh, yeah, if there's anything, just get in contact and we will sort things out. All right, take care, guys. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>